Hey YouTube, welcome back. It's been a while, but I'm excited to finally dive into another game redesign walkthrough. And in this video, I'll be attempting a sound redesign for Hogwarts Legacy and how to integrate the sound into Unreal Engine 5 Metasound. I really like how responsive the sound design is in this game. The combat sound effects stand out the most, especially the spell casting. Each spell sounds vastly different, to the point where I can now identify spells without even looking at the UI. The basic cast has so many interesting layers and variations which is important considering how often the player will use it. Listen closely to the short clip I recorded. So let's dive in and take a look how I recreated this. Okay, so I recorded a bit of gameplay and I decided to use this little clip at the end. And notice all the layers here. There's like the whoosh sounds, there's a high pitched whistle before the impact. There's a lot going on. So if I scroll down here, I'll show you what I designed. First, I wanted to start with the whistle effect. And for this, I dragged in like a bullet pass by sound. I wanted something that had a lot of wind, high frequency movement, and a gradual build up here. So it's nothing special at the moment. It's just the same sample that's repeating every time I trigger it. And I do trigger on different pitches, but what makes it more interesting is modulating the pitch here inside phase plant. If I enable all of these, what these are doing is creating random LFO rates and amplitudes for every time this sample is played. Yeah, way more interesting, kind of a bit silly by itself, but once I pair it with the next layer, so you can tell that this whistle builds up before the impact. And then this is a whoosh sound. It's a stick that was recorded really close to the microphone and I wanted lots of weight. So if I pair these two together, now it's starting to make more sense because it's adding more weight, more power right before the impact. But there isn't a tail just yet. This will be the next layer. If I add this tail in, what I wanted was also a very tonal sound with like lots of room, lots of reverb. This next layer is interesting kind of source material. I looked for stand bags that was like dropped on the ground or punched. I kind of wanted a bit of a diffused sound that matches the particle effects that you see on screen on the impact. So it's very soft and uh, we need a bit more weight now. So this is kind of like a synthetic version of the impact just before. I uh, use face plant for this and I wanted like a bit of a subby bass punch. And then uh, I'm just using noise for the higher frequency. This curve changes the pitch of the bass. I didn't want a normal like bass drop. I wanted something that had a bit more movement to it. So this is how it sounds by itself. The noise has a bit of, what is that? It's uh, like a phaser, here we go. Reverb as well, you, you have to have a bit of that for the tail. So now let's run through everything. Oh yeah, I also added an overall reverb here on this track. So I have a few of these running through this reverb. Let's see, it's kind of like a medium hall. Here you go, underwater, that's interesting. Don't know why I picked that, but it just glues everything together in, in the space. We can do something similar like this in Unreal Engine, just running this through like a, a meta sound effect or taking it through like a submix. So now let's listen to all of these five layers together with the reverb. Uh, if I go back to the original, it's kind of hard just to isolate the sound with all the other environmental effects going on. I did reduce all other sound classes in the game's audio menu, but there's still a lot going on in the mix, so just bear that in mind. Yeah, so you hear a chime effect, for example, when you get like a combo move. Also, the, the sounds of the enemy comes through, but you can still hear those layers. So now that we know how these work in context, I can start dragging all of these in and uh, recreate this in Unreal Engine 5 meta sounds. The reason why I want to do this is because this game was actually made in Unreal Engine 5, and I believe they would have done something similar using meta sounds. 
And it would make sense because like, there's so many different layers going on, not just for this sound, but throughout the game. Okay, cool. So let's move over to Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so I exported all of these sounds. I actually exported a few different variations. These are just different one shots that were recorded for each of these layers. The first before actually just dragging in these sounds, I kind of wanted to set up a few meta sound patches. Think of these as like custom functions that we will reuse for each layer. So here I have uh, what's called the pitch mod. If I open this up, I wanted to create a pitch modulation effect using an LFO. Here's the LFO here. But instead of just getting a constant LFO, I wanted it to kind of ramp up and back down again. So I multiplied that with the envelope here. I can change the attack and decay time. I've actually exposed these in the patch so I can customize this later on for every layer as well. So with this patch set up, the next one I wanted to do was just a basic patch for a pitch and volume variation. So every time a sound is triggered, it will output a different float for the um, pitch and for the volume. So I just expose the outputs for these that I can then drag into the pitch and volume inputs in the MetaSound sources. So after setting these two up, I have a final one, which is combining these together. So you see here, I have the pitch volume one and then the pitch mod. And right in the middle here, I know it's a bit complicated to look at. I probably should have added some comments, but you know how it is. I've set up a random get in an array. So these arrays will be set up for each layer because remember there's different one shots within each layer that I've imported. So I can set all those up in arrays. Don't worry too much about this just yet. It'll make more sense once I actually build the Metasound source file. So. This one here, this is where I actually insert the different layers. You see, these layers are all arrays and there's five layers in total, just like what we had in uh, Reaper. These are triggered by on play. So just like a, a normal setup so far and blended together with a stereo mixer. The cool thing about uh, patches is that you can just copy and paste the patch over as many as you want. Uh, it saves a lot of space once you actually set up the Metasound source file. You can imagine how big the file would be if I would do all the pitch modulation effects and things like that within this one page. It would be too much. So just for simplicity's sake, I've arranged it like this. So inheriting this Metasound patch five times and then moving it through to the output. I have this layer set as unfinished because that's the longest sample that's played. If I play this now, you can hear that everything is playing in its correct spot. And that's because I have like a delay time for the sample within this bit of sound patch. And so the high whistle should be right at the start. So there isn't any delay time. The start of the whoosh comes a bit later and the tail is a bit later than that, and that's along with the impact as well, so 0.4 seconds. If I double click one of these, you'll see what I mean. Um, I've set up, where is it? I've set up this delay time here, and this could be uh, control however long I want, and that's right in between the random get within the array and the wave player that plays the uh, sample. So going back to this meta sound source, you'll notice that I have a quite a few more uh, inputs here. This is to control the pitch modulation and volume variation and things like that. And so I have this set up for every sound because again, I'm just copy pasting this patch, right? For the whistle and whoosh effects, I wanted a lot of pitch variation, just like how I kind of set up the LFO in Reaper. But for the impact sounds, don't really want that much pitch variation. So I just have zero for min and max, pitch mod amount is zero, so it's not changing at all. And same here for the other impact layer. So when I hit play and I want to hit play again, it actually stops it because uh, I hit stop right before the unfinished was triggered, right? And I kind of want these sounds to overlap each other. Just like, you know, in the gameplay, we heard that the basic spell cast sound was triggering and they were overlapping each other instead of cutting each other off. So at the moment, these are cutting each other off and I don't want that. So what I can actually do is, again, make a whole new meta sound source. So here I've called it like sequence, it's not really a sequence. Initially I wanted to set up a, a sequence so it will be calling multiple versions of these, but it turns out I found a, a simpler approach. So I could still use this on play. I've enabled this now because you could see it's it's playing at the top here, 
but nothing's happening because I haven't connected anything to it. But what I have underneath is a custom trigger. So this on play acts as like a primer, so priming the sound. And then once it's primed, it's just going to be listening for this trigger node. And if I click this fairly quickly, you'll start to hear the overlapping of this sound. And every time it's played, you hear like the different pitches, volumes, there's so many different, the variation's endless basically. So yeah, and then once I wanna stop this, I have this custom unfinished trigger. In game, this could be set up so it's you know this is always primed uh, or it's primed if the player is maybe able to use their spell cast i'm not sure if this would actually be an effective strategy in game but this seemed like an easy approach this video was inspired by marshall mckee's video on remaking elden ring sounds and he did an excellent job in creating his own unique twist by improving the responsiveness of the sound effects i highly recommend watching this because he goes into it in great detail Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment below if you have any ideas for future videos.